Chapter 57 Malchus's Ear John chapter 18 verses 1 to 11 When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered, and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, Having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon them, went forth and said unto him, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he speak, Of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear, and the servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink of it? John chapter 18, verses 1 to 11. These verses are properly titled by many, The Betrayal, but John stresses Christ's status not as a victim, but as a Messiah in his glorification. Until this moment, Christ's conflict has been with the religious leaders. Now, as Rudolf Bultmann pointed out, another phenomenon advances against Jesus, the Roman state. The world at its best, in its religious and civil forms, was now arrayed against the Christ, man's greatest means against God incarnate. The disciples and Jesus crossed the book Credron. When the Passover lambs were killed at the temple, their blood was poured on the altar as an offering to God. Many lambs were sacrificed. Thirty years later, a census counted 256,000 lambs offered. This tells us how many families of Judeans and pilgrims were in Jerusalem. From the altar, a channel led to the brook Kedron, and the blood flowed into it. When Jesus crossed the brook, it probably still ran red from the blood of the Passover lambs, a grim reminder to Jesus Christ that he himself would be the true Passover lamb. His destination was the Garden of Gethsemane. It was not open to the general public, but some wealthy citizen had apparently given a key to Jesus and the disciples, who found their quiet retreat when in Jerusalem. Judas knew this, and so he came there with a band of soldiers sent by the chief priests and Pharisees to arrest him. The officers mentioned in verse 3 were temple police. The band of Spera, a Greek word, could mean 1. A Roman cohort of 600 men 2. A cohort of auxiliary soldiers consisting of 1,000 men or 3. A manipule, a detachment of 200 men. For even 200 men to be sent out to arrest a lone man meant that they feared he would have a vast throng of supporters surrounding him. They came with torches, lanterns and weapons. Jesus went forward to meet them, asking, Whom seek ye? Verse 4. The answer was, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I am he. Judas was with the crowd. Verse 5. When Jesus identified himself, the crowd stepped back, and in so doing, stepped on those crowding behind them. They all stumbled and fell to the ground. Verse 6. Again our Lord asked, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 7. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he, if therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Meaning his disciples. Verse 8. He had earlier declared that none would be lost in this coming trial. John chapter 17, verse 12. At this point, Simon Peter, seeing the fearfulness of the arresting men, drew his sword against the high priest's servant. Matthew chapter 26, verse 51, Mark chapter 14, verse 47, Luke chapter 22, verses 50 to 52, which was a blow the man ducked. 
His ear, however, was cut off. Our Lord then healed the wound. Luke chapter 22, verse 51. Our Lord's act here is not recorded by John, for whom the necessary details are only those which tell us of his person and task. John does tell us that the man's name was Malchus, verse 10. Our Lord's word to Peter and to any other disciple about to pull out his sword was, Put up thy sword into the sheath, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Verse 11. The future of mankind depended on this atoning work. It was inconceivable that he would avoid that calling. The presence of Malchus, the high priest's servant, has an irony to it. The word in the Greek text is doulon, a form of doulas, a bond servant. In effect, Malchus stood between two high priests, Caiaphas, John chapter 11, verse 49, and Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter 7, verses 22 to 28. Caiaphas could regenerate no man. Jesus Christ could raise the dead and make a man a new creation. To his dying day, Malchus was an unwitting testimony, a witness to the power of Jesus Christ as against Caiaphas. The healing of Malchus's ear was Christ's last miracle, his last ministry to human suffering and need. All his miracles testify to the fact that he was God incarnate. Now the glory of the atonement would replace miracles. For a time, Christ continued to work miracles through his apostles, but these eventually gave way to the glory of the atonement and the resurrection. The promise was now more than healing, it was eternal life in him and personal and cosmic resurrection and renewal. A key statement in our text is in verse 6. Literally, Jesus does not say, I am he, but I am. In other words, he declared himself to be God. I am, declared in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, the eternal being, the Lord, creator and governor over all things. It was a combination of his boldness in stepping forward and this statement of self-identification that made the throng of soldiers and temple officers fall down in confusion. They were badly shaken in finding one who was not a victim, one who confronted them as their lord. The soldiers, even as they arrested him, were a disturbed lot because they had been confronted by a statement implying deity, which was followed by a miraculous act of healing, a cut-off ear restored. Verse 12, properly a part of the next section, is naturally related to verses 1 to 11. We are told that the arresting officers bound Jesus they tied him up for delivery to the high priest's kangaroo court. They had seen the miracle of Malchus's ear and had heard Jesus declare himself to be one with God, but they still felt that their bonds could hold him. Too many scholars and theologians place hands on Jesus, assuming that they can contain him. It would be easier to chain the universe than to chain God the Son, God incarnate. John writes with a fine irony, as do the other evangelists, Matthew, Mark and Luke. The blindness of sin is a radical one, and it leads to blindness in the most deadly form, an inability to recognise God's truth and person. Verse 